I'm in Turkey for the launch event for the new Sony A9 Mark III, which is a hugely exciting camera for multiple reasons. Firstly, it takes the speed crown back in Sony's lineup from the A1, which is not just a 50 megapixel camera, but also shoots blisteringly fast and was the fastest camera in Sony's lineup for a long time. Well, not anymore, not after this camera. And secondly, it is the world's first camera with a full frame global shutter inside, which is a huge deal, not just for fast stills photography like this is designed for, but also for the video market. Global shutter is a big deal and really the only camera on the market right now that is widely used and has a global shutter inside is the Red Komodo. And so to see a camera like this with a full frame global shutter inside from Sony is fantastic. For those of you who aren't already familiar with global shutter sensors, what it essentially means is that it's reading the whole sensor at the same time. Nearly every single other camera on the market uses what's called a rolling shutter CMOS design, which means that the image is being read from top to bottom every time it takes a photograph or takes a frame of a video. Now, rolling shutter has got better and better and better, and there are some cameras out there that are incredibly fast, so you barely notice it at all. There are some cameras that really suffer, though, from artifacts like jello when it's handheld and distortion on fast panning. A global shutter gets rid of all of that. So you might see that when you're quickly moving the camera, you might see that when something in your frame is moving very fast, like a runner or a train going past or anything like that you do run into these problems a lot when you're doing very fast paced work. And so having a camera of this quality with a global shutter inside is hugely exciting, certainly for video, but really important for the types of stills work that this has been primarily designed for, like fast paced sports and wildlife. So the still side of this camera is pretty insane, really. The Sony A1 was already pretty insane. It could do 30 frames a second with no blackout in the EVF. This ups that to 120, so four times faster still shooting, and that is in full quality, the full 24 megapixels of this sensor with full RAW or JPEG or high for whatever you want to shoot in. It can do it for a good few seconds at that super high frame rate. There are a few neat little tricks in order to make that 120 frames a second of stills easier to work with. The first is pre-record. So the camera is constantly taking photos when you half press the shutter and you can set how long it will save of those photos when you actually press the shutter and then carry on filming in your burst rate. So say you're doing a fast action, say a punch, you can press your shutter at the exact point the punch hits and then it will save a little bit beforehand and you can carry on bursting with the mode afterwards with the 120 frames a second. And so you are guaranteed almost, as long as your timing is good, to really nail that shot, which is incredible. It also has a really nice little feature called continuous shooting boost mode. Now this is for if you don't want to understandably shoot in 120 frames a second all the time. You can be in a lower frame a second mode, say 15, for example, which is still very fast. And I remember my first experience of picking up a Canon 1DX Mark II that had 14 frames a second in it. It felt incredible to be taking photos that quickly. So looking forward to now, to the 120 frames a second is pretty insane. But say you could be in that 15 frames a second normal medium frame rate and then hold down custom five while shooting and it will boost it up to 120 frames a second. So to clarify, holding down the shutter, shooting 15 frames a second, you hold down C5 and it will up that to 120 frames a second while you're holding that button down. So you can be shooting if something really fast is happening, you go oh, burst mode to make sure you're capturing it, which is really neat. On top of that, there's all the other Sony innovations that we've seen in recent cameras, like the AI autofocus tracking. It can keep subject in focus at that 120 frames a second stills. Um, even when they're moving around quite a lot, it is very impressive what the AI tracking on this can do. Another smaller feature that is a really big deal for some still shooters is that the shutter speed can now be raised all the way up to 1 over 80,000. Now the A1 could do 1 over 32,000, so 80,000 is just incredibly fast. 
Okay, let's chat through the video functionality. Unlike on previous A9s, Sony haven't watered back the video side of this camera at all. They have really chucked everything they've got at this camera. It has a 6K sensor which will oversample for 4K video, and you can record that 4K video up to 60p when it's oversampled. It can go up to 4K 120, but you do lose the oversampling. However, the 4K 120 is not cropped at all, which is lovely to see because on some Sony cameras, most of them in fact, you do get that little crop in when you engage 4K 120. So no crop whatsoever in 4K 120, and you get oversampled 4K video up to 60p. We also have everything we would expect from the picture profiles mode. We've got S-Log3, we've got S-Cinetone, we've got HLG, and all the other features that we would expect on all the other Sony cameras. We also get the full suite of codecs, there's XAVC-S, XAVC-SI, XAVC-HS. One slight annoyance for me is that XAVC-HS, so the H.265 implementation, doesn't go down to 25p or 30p, it's 100 or 50, which is slightly frustrating because I love to use H.265 with modern computers, it edits beautifully, I would love to have 25p H.265 in these cameras, that's the same on most other Sony cameras, none of them do it, I just don't understand why, please Sony add that. We do get the 16-bit RAW out over the HDMI though, just like on other cameras, which is fantastic to see. The biggest difference you're going to see in video modes compared to other Sony cameras is of course the global shutter. You know, this is a big deal for video users, for action stuff, for panning. I mean, if you're doing any sort of fast movement in your video work, having a lower rolling shutter performance is incredibly important for people. And it is hard to get that on some of the most common cameras that we sell without spending a lot of money on some very expensive cameras. And so, yes, this is a very expensive camera, but to get global shutter for video is a really big deal. If you do wildlife and if you do sports, because of that one thing alone, it's going to be very hard to ignore this camera for video use. So there are a few changes to the ergonomics. Firstly, the grip is that little bit bigger than we've seen on previous Sony cameras, and the shutter button is actually angled that little bit further forward. So that means it is in a much more comfortable place, I think, when you're actually taking photos and using it. So that is really nice to see. Um, we did see steps in this direction with the A7R Mark V. This just takes it that little bit further. There's then a new custom button, which is hidden around here on the front up the top there, which is C5. And this by default engages that higher burst mode of 120 frames a second when you're in one of the normal frame second modes. Then there's a new star on the drive mode dial which basically just turns off that dial and means that your drive mode is controlled by the touchscreen on the back rather than having to use the dial. So if some people didn't like the dial, that's a nice little addition. Apart from that, there is a lot here that is going to feel very familiar to a lot of Sony users. You know, the buttons are in a very familiar place. It uses the same batteries. It has the same card slot system where there's two slots. Both slot is both a SD card and a CF Express Type A card, which is a really nice system. And you are definitely going to want to be using those faster CF Express Type A cards now that this camera can do so much, especially in stills. So yeah, there's a lot here that is very familiar for Sony users, just a little better in a few key areas. So today's been an absolute whirlwind. It's very hard to get to know a camera when you've only got a few hours with it, you're trying to film with it and get to know it, you're trying to film another video as well, handle two cameras at the same time. But my first impressions after just spending a few hours in an incredible whirlwind with the camera, are really positive. This thing is an absolute stills photography workhorse it really is just to know that you'll hold that shutter button down and you're capturing 120 photographs a second and you captured the ones from before you took the shutter button as well is insane add to that the global shutter to know that you're never going to get any distortion no matter what you're doing with the camera no matter how fast you're panning it I think this is a clear choice for anyone doing wildlife or sports, that kind of work. This is absolutely a camera that needs to be on your radar for those reasons. For video, I think it's a really interesting one as well. The global shutter, like I said at the beginning, is a massive, massive deal for video users. 
Now, it will be interesting to see in a more controlled environment how the image quality holds up, but even if it is just as good as we've seen from the other alpha cameras, like something much more simple and more affordable like the A7 Mark IV, for example, if it can meet that kind of quality, and have all the features in the global shutter that this thing does, I really think it would be worth the price tag, and I think this would be a very exciting camera for a lot of different styles of video work. One thing that I think is absolutely missing from the camera right now is pre-roll for video. Just the same as we have pre-record for stills photography, it would be great if in video it recorded the second before you press the record button as well. Particularly for slow motion, I think that would really help this camera get picked up by people doing natural history work, anything wildlife, sports documentaries, that kind of environment, this camera would be perfect for. I also think because of the full frame global shutter, it's gonna find a bit of a home amongst people that are doing any kind of fast paced work. I, this is gonna be a really interesting camera to see how much this is picked up by the market. But I think that's enough for today. It's been a really busy day, the first day with the camera. I hope this video has been useful to you. Pre-orders are now open down at Pro EV, so the links to that are down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.